Is this one on? I don't know. Test. There it is. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be heard to morning. Let your joy be turned to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Last night, last night. Oh. I have for nice to meet you. I used to because now I'm a Christian. Oh, yeah, because you got punched. Now I'm a Christian. Yeah, and my oh, friends don't punch. like Jesus. I'm sorry about that. So I've lost a lot of my friends. Because the Bible says to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, but rather expose them. So my friends don't like to hang out around me anymore because I expose their wicked deeds. They don't like that. Just like you people don't like to be told what to do, or you don't like to be told you're going to hell. You think you're good enough. You think you're a nice guy. You think you're a good person. So you deserve heaven. Well, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's your problem because no amount of good works, no amount of being nice or being a good person can get you to heaven. You need Jesus to get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. There's no other way for you to get to heaven but by Jesus. And repenting, Jesus said, repent, or you will all likewise perish. If you don't repent, you're going to burn in hell if you don't repent. Jesus said, if you repent, you will all likewise perish. You see, repenting is when you confess your sins to God. You have a godly sorrow about your sin because you know it angers God. It displeases Him. And so it should displease you too. So you confess your sin to God and you forsake it. I used to be a drunk. I used to get drunk all the time. But I was convinced that I was condemned in my sin. I was convinced that I was going to hell if I died in my sin. I was going to be in hell. So I prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked Him to forgive me. I asked Him to change me. I asked Him for help and He sent me help. He sent me the Holy Ghost that helps me to resist the devil that teaches me about God and about His Word. And God changed me. He gave me a new heart. I became born again. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You go to hell if you're not born again. You need to be born again. Okay. You see, when you're born again, all the old things, all the wicked things about you will pass away and you'll become a new creature in Christ. Jesus made me a new person. Jesus turned my life around because I was willing to let him change me. I was willing to give up my sin and to let God work in me. You know, the Bible says to pray, thy will be done, not my will be done. The Bible says to pray that God's will be done on earth. So I gave up all my friends. I gave up my drunkenness and my partying. I gave up my sex outside of marriage. I gave up my, my friendships that were, that were evil. I gave them up. I gave up cussing. I gave up lying. I gave up my sin. I gave it to the Lord, and He gave me a new heart, and He changed me. And the Bible says that Jesus will forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. All of it. There's not one sin that you can't stop. There's not one sin that you can't stop. How many times do you rise? What's that? How many times do you rise? Do I what? you think? What sin can't you stop? There's not one. You see, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But for every temptation, He'll make a way for escape. 
that every temptation that you face, every wrench that the devil throws at you, you can resist it. You don't have to give in to it. You don't have a sinful nature that forces you to sin. You have a free will that God gave you. God gave you a free will to choose. You can choose obedience in Jesus, or you can choose sin. You can choose to be a child of the devil. You know, the, a lot of people think that God loves everybody, and God accepts everybody as they are. Well, I would agree that God loves everybody. He has a benevolent love for everybody. But he also has a hatred. God hates all workers of iniquity. God hates sinners. Psalms 5, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 5 says, God hates all workers of iniquity. So a lot of people think that God hates sin, but loves the sinner. And, uh, well, here's the problem with that. God can't throw your sin in hell, but pick, take you to heaven. Sin is only a thing because you did it. Sin requires a sinner. So if God hates all workers of iniquity, God hates you how you are. And the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with you people. God is angry with your sin. God is angry with the wicked every day. And you're wicked if you sin. It's as simple as that. You're wicked if you sin. If you're not living a holy life, if you're not obeying Jesus, you're a wicked man. And the Bible says, let the wicked man forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You need to forsake that garbage. You need to forsake your porno watching. You need to forsake your friendship with the world and going to the bar. You need to forsake your drunkenness. You need to forsake your lying. You need to forsake your sex outside of marriage. Because if you don't, you're going to give an account to God of your life. If you don't confess and forsake these things, God's going to hold you accountable for all the sins that you ever committed. You see, I'm not a perfect person. I sinned in the past. I did my fair share of sinning. But I've been made perfect in Jesus Christ. I've been made perfect in Jesus. He can forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But the problem is, everybody wants to be forgiven. You want to be able to go and get drunk. You want to be able to tell a lie for your own benefit. You want to, you want to love money. You want to be a homosexual. You want, to, you want to go and get high. You want to keep your sin and be forgiven for it. That's not how it works with Jesus. You see, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So when you repent, he will forgive you and cleanse you. Everybody wants to be forgiven, but not many people want to be cleansed. Not many people want to be cleansed of their sins, but you all want to be forgiven. You all think that Jesus is going to save you when you die. You think when you meet God that Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to hug you and say, It's okay. I know you never really came to me. I know that you love your drinking. I know. It's okay. No, Jesus is going to say, Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. He's going to say, I never knew you. He's going to say, I do not know you. I don't know where you're from. Get away from me. And he's going to throw you in hell. He's going to burn you in hell for eternity. He said, There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's going to be eternal torment for you people if you don't turn from your sin. You know, the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his own soul in the end? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I can't shut up and I don't want you to burn in hell. Jesus doesn't want you to burn in hell. That's why he died. That's why he got beat and spit upon. He lived, he lived a perfect life. And yet he got tortured and got killed for you. But you hate God. You hate God in your deeds. You know, the Bible says they profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being disobedient, abominable, and disqualified for every good work. That's you. If you profess to know God, but you deny him in your works, your life is an abomination before God. Your life
Christ's an abomination before God. And God's going to let you know that on Judgment Day. He's going to say you never, you never repented. He's going to say your life's an abomination. You lived for yourself. You didn't live for me. You lived for yourself. If you keep choosing to live for yourself, you're going to pay for it in the end. You're going to get eternal destruction, eternal punishment. Just like the Bible says, God is warning you people. God has sent street preachers out here tonight to warn you people. In Ezekiel chapter 33, it says we're to be watchmen. We're to, we're to warn you people that the sword is coming. The wrath of God is coming. It's going to wipe you people out. He's going to throw you people in hell. But we're warning you that there's a way out. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to accept the sword. You don't have to be cut in two. Jesus made a way out for you. Jesus said that wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will go in by it. But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. And few will find it. You see, in those two verses, Jesus tells us that most people are going to burn in hell. Most people are going to burn in hell, and it's their own fault. It's their choice. God gives you the choice. But Jesus warned and said that most people are going to go through that wide gate, broad way that leads to hell. Are you going to be one of those people that goes in the wide gate and the broad way? Are you going to go in with the masses and burn in hell and weep and gnash your teeth for eternity? Are you going to be one of the few that Jesus spoke of that walks that straight and narrow path, that lives righteously, that lives holy? And you'll enter, you'll, you'll live the difficult way. You'll come out from among the world and be separate. That's what the Lord said to do. The Lord says, come out from among them and be separate. You see, I used to be of the world too. I used to have a bunch of friends and I was a cool guy. I was good at sports in high school and everybody liked me, but God didn't like me. God was angry with me. I was a loser at the sight of God. I was an abomination at the sight of God. Men approved of me, but you know, the Bible says, woe well unto you when the whole world speaks well of you. So I realized that and I said, well, woe well unto me because most of the world speaks well of me. I'm doing something wrong. And now I'm doing something right. I know I'm doing something right because you people hate us. And Jesus said the whole world hates me because I testif testify of it that its works are evil. And we're doing the same thing out here tonight. We're testifying that you people's works is evil. You have bad fruit. You need to check your fruit. You need to have good fruit. Jesus said a good tree will bear good fruit and a bad tree will bear bad fruit. Now a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And your people's fruit is obviously bad. It's obviously rotten. It's stinky, nasty fruit. And Jesus said that every bad tree is gonna be hewn down and tossed into the lake of fire. You need to be a good tree and bear good fruit. If you keep bearing bad fruit and you don't repent, Jesus warned, you will be thrown to hell. You will weep and gnash your teeth for eternity. And it will not be a party. You know, a lot of people think that we need to stop judging. Well, a Christian should be full of judgment. We should be full of judgment as Christians because we love our neighbor. If you love your neighbor and you know they're on their way to hell, you need to warn your neighbor that they're on their way to hell. If you love them, you know, if, if the bridge is out, the bridge is out up the road, I'm going to get a big sign and I'm going to wave my arms and tell you, hey, the bridge is out, don't keep driving. If you keep driving, you're going to drive off the cliff and die. Well, that's kind of what we're doing out here tonight. The bridge is out and the analogy is the bridge leads to hell. The bridge is out, you're going to drive right off into hell. If you don't turn and, and live, if you don't turn from your sins and live, but nobody has a problem with the guy telling someone the bridge is out because it saves your life. But you get mad and you revile the guy that tells you that your eternal life is at stake. 
that the bridge to eternal life, the bridge to heaven is out in your life, you need to turn around and go the other way. If you keep living your way, you're going to drive right off that cliff into hell. You're going to drive right off that cliff into hell. So we're out here to warn you, because the Bible says if I don't warn you, God's going to require your blood at my hand. And I don't want your people's blood on my hands. And I don't want you to go to hell either. You know, the Lord says in the Bible that it's his will that not even one would perish. He doesn't want anybody to burn in hell. He wants you all to go to heaven. But he knows most of you won't. He knows most of you will choose to deny him. That you won't make a blow of your life. That you love the world more than you love God. But his will is that everybody would come to him. That everybody would turn to him and return to him. And that they would stop their sinning and live holy and perfect. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't live holy and perfect. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. And for every temptation, he gives you a way of escape. You can escape every temptation. You know, I used to do something habitually every day. I would cuss all the time. F words, all these four letter words, I'd cuss all the time. Habitually, it became natural to me. The curse words flowed out of my mouth. You know, and I prayed to Jesus, and within a week or two, I didn't cuss anymore. I'd catch myself and I'd say, this is wrong, I'm gonna go to hell for this. You know what, Jesus cleaned me up real quick. I quit cussing. Even though it was a habit, but God gave me a way of escape out of that temptation. And there's a way of escape out of every temptation, every single one. You know, the Bible says, Jesus says, he who commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. And he who the son sets free is free indeed. You're not just a little bit free, you're completely free. When you're set free by Jesus, you're set completely free by your, from your sin. You don't need to sin anymore. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus didn't say, go and sin a little less. Jesus said, go and sin no more. No more. No more, no, no sin, no more. Because if you go and sin some more, no. you're going to burn in hell. It's very simple. You see, the gospel is very simple. You don't have to be under the law. You don't have to be under uh, the law that can't save you because you've broken the law. The law doesn't save, but Jesus saves, and God's grace can save you. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus, but... How do you know that you have the grace of God? How do you know that you're under the grace of God? You know, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 1, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Certainly not, Paul said. If you're under the grace of God, you can't continue in your sin. If you continue in your sin, you're not under the grace of God. You're under the law, and you're condemned by it. The law can't save you. God's grace saves you. And God's grace is described like this. In Titus 2, 11 and 12, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. So the grace of God teaches you that you should deny ungodliness, that you should deny worldly lust today. That you should live soberly, righteously, and godly right now. If you really had the grace of God, that's what it would teach you. That's what you would know to do. But you know, the church these days, and people want to pervert the grace of God. In, in June verse 4, it says they pervert the grace of our God unto lewdness. And it means do as you please, do whatever you want. People want you to think, the devil wants you to think 
but God's grace means that you can sin, sin, sin all your whole life. And in the end, God's going to forgive you because God's grace is so great. That's what people want you to think, that God's grace is so great that no matter how much you sin, God doesn't love you. God, God loves you. He wants all workers of iniquity. He wants you to repent. God hates all workers of iniquity. God doesn't hate saints. God loves the saints. And God has a benevolent love for all you people. And he as well as not one of you to perish. Not one of you. Don't be a slave to sin. You need to give up your sin job. You need to quit your sin job. You know the Bible says, For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. No fornicator has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. It's that simple. If you're having sex outside of marriage, you will go to hell if you die in that sin. You can repent and stop having sex outside of marriage, and you'll be forgiven and cleansed, and you won't do that anymore. If you're an unclean person, if you're a covetous person who is an idolater, you will not go to heaven. If you die as a covetous man who is an idolater, you're going to be burning in hell. But you can repent, be forgiven and cleansed of that sin, not living it anymore. You see how simple the gospel is? You see how simple the message of the gospel is? Here's the gospel for you. Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, was God manifested in the flesh on earth, was tempted at all points, just like we are, and he lived the perfect life. He never sinned not once. And he was hated by the world. He preached that people should repent. He testified of the world that its deeds were evil, and people hated him for it. And when he was 33 years old, they beat him, they spit upon him, they reviled him, they falsely accused him, they hung him on a cross, and killed him. And he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. If you obey Jesus, he'll be your savior. And Jesus preached, repent, or you will all likewise perish. You see, God's forgiveness is conditional. God's forgiveness is conditional. It requires something of you. A lot of people know John 3.16. We can read John 3.16. Because people don't know much past John 3.16. So a lot of people know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, James says, in the book of James, he says, if you believe in one God, you do well, but even the demons believe and tremble. If you believe in Jesus, great. If you know that Jesus is real, okay, that's good. But even the demons believe and tremble, and the demons are not going to go to heaven, the demons are going to be in hell. Now verse 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You see, people don't read through verse 19. 
People don't read to verse 21. We'll keep going. Verse 20, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. You people hate the light. You hate the ways of the Lord. You hate the straight and narrow path. John 3.20 says you hate the light. Verse 21 says, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. You see, I do the truth now. I came to the light. And my deeds will be clearly seen by God that they have been done in God. Because I choose every day to obey Jesus now. I used to choose every day to be a son of the devil. You know, a lot of people think that everyone's a child of God. We're all children of God. Well, Jesus said in John chapter 8, you are of your father the devil and the works of your father you want to do. You people in your sin are children of the devil. You're not a child of God. A child of God doesn't live in sin. Jesus said you're of your father the devil. In 1 John, he wrote, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. But he who sins is of the devil. If you sin, you are of the devil. It's clearly written in the Bible, people. It says, let no one deceive you. Let no one deceive you. He who sins is of the devil. If you sin, you are of the devil. You're not a child of God. You're not saved by his grace through your dead faith in him. You are of the devil. It's that simple. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 says, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you're any of those things, you're not going to heaven. You're, you're bound to hell. You're on that wide gate and Broadway to hell if you're living that way. But Jesus is the way out for you. You don't have to continue an unrighteous person. You don't have to be an unrighteous person. Jesus can forgive you and cleanse you of all your unrighteousness and you can be made perfect. You can be made perfect in Jesus Christ. But you hate the light. You hate the light like the Bible says in John 3, 19 and 20. It says you hate the light. You love the world. The Bible says do not love the world or the things of the world. You know, the things of the world are passing away and the lust thereof is passing away just like you're going to. The Bible says it's appointed on the man once to die and then comes judgment. 10 out of 10 people die, folks. You're all gonna die and you're all gonna face God. You're all gonna stand before a holy, holy God and give an account of your life. You're gonna be judged for every thought, word, and deed. You're gonna be judged for every secret thing you ever did, whether good or evil. God sees all people. You can't hide from God. You can't hide anything from God. You'll be judged according to your works. Don't let anyone deceive you into thinking that God's going to accept you how you are in your sin and He's going to pardon you and forgive you even though you won't forsake your sins. Well, I don't hate you. I love you because you're my neighbor and I don't want you to burn in hell. Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. And that's what we're out here to tell you that you need to be zealous and repent. Then you can be with us. You can come preach the gospel with us and hope that more people get saved. 
you need to be zealous and repent? Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all like Christ perish. You will all perish together. And you know, it's not only those who practice the sin, and Romans 1, it says those who approve of that. If you so much as approve of a homosexual, you're just as damned as they are. Because the Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And to reprove them means to correct them, to bring shame to them for their sin. But if you're partaking or approving with them, you're not reproving. You're having fellowship. You're having a fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. First John chapter 3 says, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, and he who sins is of the devil. First John 5 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. If you love God, you'll keep his commandments. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, He who hears my words and does them, it is he who loves me. You see, you can't fool God. You can say you love God, but if you don't do what he says to do, he's going to know you're a liar. John wrote in the book of 1 John, By this we know that we know God, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know God, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Don't be a liar before God. You need to grow up and repent, sir. You need to grow up and repent. You will be honking your horn in hell. You'll be weeping and gnashing your teeth. The Bible says, woe unto you when the whole world speaks well of you. You cheer for the guy that lives in sin and beats his horn at the preaching. But you revile the guy that wants your soul to be saved. You revile the preacher that doesn't want you to burn in hell and that wants you to have the truth, that wants you to be set free from your sins. You people love darkness and you hate God and your works are evident. Your works and your fruit make it known that you hate God and you hate the light. You see, even going into the bar is a very dangerous thing for your soul. The Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. If you're going into the bar,